So perhaps we had to look for Ephraim, and for that we had to go back to our treasure map, we had to go back to the Bible. In the 8th century BC, the biblical account of the facts is fully reliable about uh, the reasoning, about the whys and, uh, and hows, uh, that is something else. But about what happened, we can fully trust uh, the biblical account. It is fully parallel to what we found in archaeological excavations. I look at things as a believer. For me, the scriptures are paramount. In the book of Kings, we find in several places references to where the tribes were exiled to. Also in the book of Chronicles. It says in these texts that they were exiled to five places. First, the mountains of the Medes. This is in the direction of Kurdistan and the Caucasus. Second, the river Gozan. Third, Hala. Fourth, Hara. And last, Havor. Where are these places? In modern Syria, there are places that roughly correspond to the biblical locations. There is a river called Havor, and nearby there is a city called Gozan. It's very interesting. Few documents were found recently in the in a city on the river Habur, called Durkatlimu, a German excavation, uh, and the uh, nineteen. 93, they were published. Uh, so, uh, only four documents, I think, and in one or two of them, there are Israelite names. Uh, one of them is Hazakiyahu, Hazakiah. Uh, now, the date is uh, the first year, year, year two or what, of Nebuchadnezzar. So, that means they are not Judeans. They definitely are Israelites. Israelites in the area of, of Habur, where they should be. Today there are no Israelites waiting by the river Havor. But what if they moved east, taking their place names with them? One of the passes between Afghanistan and Pakistan is known to the world as the Khyber Pass. Pass is one of the most lawless and dangerous places on earth. It is the heart of Pakistan's northwest frontier, the wild west of the east. The first thing one notices is that the Pakistani government has no real authority here. The only way to obtain safe passage is to travel with an armed escort from the ruling people in the area, the Pathans. They have guarded the Khyber Pass for more than 2,000 years driving away Genghis Khan, the British Army, and most recently, the Soviets. In Hebrew, it's known as the Havor Pass, the same name as in the Bible. And next to the Khyber Pass, there's a city called Peshawar in Pakistan. Peshawar means the same thing, the Havor Pass. So we thought, could the Khyber be Havor in the Bible? If it is, there should be here a river called Gozan. And right there, flowing into the Kabul River, is the River Ghazni. If this is Havor, we thought, there should be somewhere around here, the city Hara. And 300 kilometers away, in Afghanistan, there's a city Harat. The whole world knows this area as a hotbed of Islamic fundamentalism. There are 15 million Pathans and not a single Jew among them. But we set out to investigate whether under the Islamic surface lies an Israelite past. The first clue 
was the fact that the Pathans claimed to descend from Afghan, son of King Saul of Israel. From their perspective, Afghanistan is an Israelite name. At worship, they seem like any other Muslims. When studying the Quran, however, they rock their bodies in the manner of Jews. To this day, it is an ancient code called Pukhtun Wali, rather than Islamic law, which commands their ultimate loyalty. It is said about Pukhtun, you know, Pukhtun is uh, really is a uh, fifth religion itself. Is not. We have got our own code of conduct, and not that whatever the Quran says, Pukhtun. I believe in that. We don't do much of the things which are not conveyed by Quran really. That's why it is said, it is a proverb that Pukhtun nim Quran namani or Pukhtu pinzam mazab de You know? <laughs> Pukhtu Wali, the code of the Pukhtu. And what is this Pukhtu Wali? It's basically Old Testament law in a kind of unforgiving way where you don't have any kind of rabbinical softening of it. Eye for an eye means eye for an eye, literally. Adultery, you're finished. If there is a conflict between your own Pukhtun Wali law and Islam, which do the Pathans choose? Our customs are those of the Pukhtun, or Pathan. There are 11 Pathan tribes in the Khyber. We all have the same customs. The main law here is the Islamic Sharia. But we Pathan follow our own specific Pukhtun Wali customs. For example, according to Islam, there must be established evidence for the conviction of adultery. You cannot convict anyone without sufficient evidence of fact. But according to Pukhtun Wali, if there is even the slightest suspicion of an illegitimate relationship between a man and a woman, both are convicted and killed. The matter is closed, and there is nothing left to discuss. As in the Bible, the Pathans still engage in animal sacrifices for religious purposes. I am of the Musahel, the people of Moses. We make sacrifices of sheep. For example, at a wedding festival, our elders would sacrifice four sheep. Today, when times are good, a man can sacrifice ten sheep. We make these sacrifices to please God and the people, too. Also, some people used to light oil lamps on Friday nights to ask for forgiveness and blessings from God. Such are our traditions. We are in a country that is supposedly dominated by Muslims, but not Muslims, just any Muslims, Muslim fundamentalism. And yet we come face to face with people that say we are Musahel. We are from the people of Moses. And as we traveled among these people who look like they stepped off the pages of the Bible, Semitic faces, long beards, biblical garb, prayer shawls, and as the evidence mounted, we could not help but feel that maybe here among the Pathans of Afghanistan and Pakistan, we would find the answers to our quest. We were astounded to learn that the Pathans adhere to biblical laws that were thought to have disappeared thousands of years ago. As in the Bible, those accused of manslaughter can escape to designated cities of refuge. It is mentioned in our old books that if you kill someone unintentionally, then you can flee to a designated place of refuge. Our books tell us that Moses ordered Joshua to establish cities of refuge and told the people that they should honor them. Today, we educated people think it is backwards to protect a criminal in this way, but the people in those areas of refuge look upon the matter as holy. To protect a fugitive is the sacred job of the elders. They treat him as their guest.
It seems the Pathans are trapped in time, tenaciously adhering to their ancient ways. They've literally created a wall between themselves and the outside world. They live in these extended family compounds, their women hidden inside. As in the Bible, the Pathan women observe a code of modesty which rarely allows them to emerge. I asked the Pathan, how could you have love songs when you keep your women hidden? It's what, a man singing a song to someone in the kitchen from the other room, the dining room? He said, no, he laughed and he said, all our love songs take place at wells. The only legitimate place for a woman in modesty to be seen is at the well. And immediately it struck me that every one of the biblical romances happens at a well. Moses meets Zipporah at a well. Right? Jacob meets Rachel and Leah at the well. Rebecca for Isaac is met at the well. It's always at the well. To enter the path and marketplaces is to step back in time. Defying all probabilities, the Pathans still live in tribal groups with Israelite names. Rabbani is similar to the tribe of Reuven, Levani, the tribe of Levi, and Shinwari, the tribe of Shimon. One Pathan tribe known as Gadun is very small in numbers, not unlike the lost tribe of Gad. Interestingly, the most numerous tribe among the Pathans is Afridi and the most numerous tribe in ancient Israel was Ephraim. There is even a sub-tribe called Waziri, known for wearing its hair long. In biblical times, Naziri, such as Samson, also did not cut their hair. 